protecting me. Hey guys, welcome back to another turn by turn video. Today, I'm gonna to walk us through Love Letter. And Love Letter is a small little card game, but it packs a lot of fun. It's so small, it only has 16 cards in it, but it can provide hours of enjoyment for just about anybody. Um, I've played this game multiple times, and no matter who I play with, they always enjoy it. Um, in Love Letter, you're delivering letters of love to the princess, but you're gonna try to stop the other players from delivering theirs. The player that can deliver all of their letters wins the game. I'm gonna walk us through one round, uh, just to show you how the game plays, to see if the game is a right fit for you. So sit back and let's play Love Letter. So let's play Love Letter. But first let's go over the basics of the game. Love Letter is a two to four player card deduction game and it plays in about 20 minutes. Um, it can play faster just depending on how comfortable your game group is with the game. Um, so you can go through games pretty quick with Love Letter. Um, it is an AEG game and it follows the same uh, shared world that AEG developed, the Tempest shared world. So it follows, thematically it follows the same theme as um, all the Tempest games. Um, I already have the game kind of set up here, um, but there's really not much to set up. The game only has 16 cards and 16 tokens. Um, the goal of the game is to win tokens of affection in each round that you play. And the player that can get the number of tokens required for the number of players you're playing, that's the player that wins the game. So for a two-player game, the first player to seven tokens wins. In a three-player game, the first person to five tokens. And in a four-player, the first person to four tokens. So the first player that reaches any of those token goals, they win the game. And then you can start new and start a brand new game of Love Letter. But for now, I'm going to show you how to play, a game, play this game turn by turn. Um, but first, we'll do the quick setup and then we'll get going. Um, the other thing I'll mention here real quick is that you do have four reference cards that you can hand the players and this simply lets them know uh, what the cards kind of do uh, before they actually may pick a card up so they can kind of be thinking about what they want to do but it also shows you the rank number of the cards and then also shows you how many of those cards are in the deck uh, of Love Letter. I'm going to set these to the side because we're not really going to need these um, but you probably would hand these out to new players and even players that just really can't remember what's going on in the game, you'll hand these out to players. So the setup is, you wanna go ahead and shuffle the cards up, which I've already done, and then you're gonna set one card to the side. Um, and this card kinda of shows up um, in a special turn cir circumstance at the end of, a, of certain games. You won't always use this card, but sometimes there is a need for it. Um, then you're gonna go ahead and deal out one card to each player. And we're gonna play this four player. But I'm gonna play this game open hand. And by that I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the cards over and we're gonna see what everybody has in the game. I think that's gonna make this game easier to understand as I walk through it turn by turn. But then also, this game is all about secrecy. You do not want other players to know what you have in your hand because it's a card deduction game. You're trying to deduce what other players have in their hands so that you can knock them out of the round. So the moment I go from player one to player two and I see what both players have, it's gonna kind of spoil the whole game to begin with. And so it probably just makes more sense just to have all the cards flipped over. It'll help you to understand it easier and to see how the turns can play out. So we'll just play this open hand and we're gonna start with player one here on my right and they have the guard card. So to start the turn, you're gonna take draw one card from the main draw pile, and you're gonna put that in your hand. Now again, players aren't gonna see what you've picked up, players are not gonna know what you've drawn, and that's up, now it's up to you to decide which of the two cards that you have in your hand that you wanna play. So for this instance, they have no choice, but they're gonna play the guard card, which says name a non-guard card and choose another player. If that player has that card, he or she is out of the round. So player one is gonna guess across the table, um, player two's they think that they might have uh, the king. So they guess the king card for player three, but that is incorrect. The player three actually has the priest card. So nothing happens. Um, the player three would just simply say, no, that's not the card I have. Uh, because the other thing about this game is secrecy, besides secrecy, is honesty. Uh, you do have to be honest about what cards you do have, otherwise the game won't make any sense because you won't be able to figure out the cards that other players are, they have in their hands. 
So now player is going to move over here to player two, who has the handmaid. They then are going to draw a card off the draw pile, and they also draw a guard card. Um, and they're going to play that card. They're going to go ahead and play the guard card, name a non-guard card, and choose another player. If that player has that card, he or she is out of the round. So they're going to guess across the table here, and they're going to guess priest. Uh, player four has the baron card, so they do not have the priest card, so they would simply say, no, we do not have that. I do not have that card. So play will then move over to player three. Player three is picking up the princess. Um, and that can be a good card to have, and that can be a bad card to have, just depending on how the play happens. So you don't want to discard the princess because the moment you discard it, you're out of the round. So player three here is kind of forced to play the priest card, which says, look at another player's hand. So player three is going to take a peek at player two's hand here, and they're going to do that secretly. So pl players one and four are, are not going to be able to see what this hand is, only player three. So player three sees that player two has the hand made. And then play continues. Now player four is going to pick up their card, and they pick up the countess. Um, and one thing to keep in mind, sometimes it's pretty, it, most of the time it's a pretty good idea to try to keep the highest ranking card that you can, as long as it makes sense. So they just picked up the countess, and they're going to play the baron. And the Baron says, you and another player secretly compare hands. The player with the lower value is out of the round. So right here shows you that it doesn't make sense if I knew all the cards. So it's going to make more sense just to play this open hand. Player four is going to say, I want to see what, I want to compare hands with player one. So these two are going to compare hands. And the player with the lower value is out of the round according to the Baron card. So player one is going to be out of the round because they had the lower ranking card of one versus the Countess seven. Now player three and two here, they don't see what happens over here. Only these two players see what's going on and only player two and three are gonna see that the guard was discarded by player one. So they know that player three has, or I'm sorry, player four has a higher ranking card than one, which really isn't a lot of help. So um, not gonna make a lot of difference for these two players. So now since player one is out of the round, Play moves over to player two. Player two is gonna draw a card. And they have the priest, and they wanna look at another player's hand. So they're gonna go ahead and play the priest, and they're gonna look at uh, the player three card, since player three already saw what player two has. This time they're gonna compare cards again, but this time player two is gonna know that player three has the princess card. So then player three is going to go um, and I moved this card over here, but then they wouldn't actually show player three. Player three would just simply show the card here and you just hang on to this card. Um, so player three is gonna draw a card and they have the, they pick up the king and they're gonna go ahead and play the king because they do not wanna discard the princess because again, the moment they discard the princess, they're out of the round. The king card says trade hands with another player of your choice. So this is kind of a, this is kind of not good because now they have to trade hands. They can't get rid of the princess because if they had done that, they'd be out. So they're forced to trade hands. But they know that they have this card over here. So then player three and player four are actually gonna trade hands. Um, and that is pure luck. They did not have any idea what player four had. So player three still might be sitting okay over here, but they know, but they know that player four has the princess card and then player four knows that player three has the countess card. So as you can see, there is a bit of thought to this game. As you're playing, you're trying to constantly remember what, it's a bit of a memory game. You're trying to remember who has what, what did they show me? Okay, yeah, I have that. And sometimes it can get, uh, I've done games where I've looked at the player's card, took a turn, and then totally forgot what the other player had. It's just sometimes you just brain just kind of fails you and you just, you don't, it doesn't work that well. So player four's turn is to go. They draw a card off the draw pile. They pick up the guard. They're gonna immediately play the guard. And since they know what they just gave, the guard card says, name a non-guard card and choose another player. If that player has that card, he or she is out of the round. Well, they know they just traded the princess for the countess, or the countess for the princess, so they're gonna guess that player three has the countess, which they indeed do. 
So that means you would discard that card, and now player three is out of the round. So now play is going to go over here to player two. Player two is going to draw a card. And keep in mind, player two does not know what, um, or they, they should know, sorry, because they've looked at player three's hand um, prior to all this trade. So they should be able to remember if they were paying attention that player four does have the princess card. So they're going to play this. They have they just drew the prince, choosing any player, including yourself, to discard his or her hand and draw a new card. So they play the prince. Player four has that princess card that reads, if you discard this card, you are out of the round. So for this instance, player two is going to win that first token of affection because they remembered that they looked at the hand over here on player three. They know it got transferred to player four. They got that prince card that tells them that they can choose any player, including themselves, to discard a card. So they knew that they, they were going to force player four to discard the princess card. The princess card, the moment it's discarded, that player is out, whoever discarded it, which only leaves player two. Player two picks up that first token of affection. And then that round ends. You're going to pick up the card that you set to the side. You're going to put all the cards back together. You're going to shuffle the deck. You're going to shuffle them up. You're going to take that first card off the top, set it to the side, and deal four new cards for the four players at the game table. For the four player game, the first player that can get to four tokens of affection, that's the player that wins the game. The game ends, and you can start over. And that's pretty much love letter. Um, the game will change a bit based on how the cards are dealt out because of the randomization. Um, plays are going to be a little bit different because the cards are being laid down different. You can see in that round, we didn't even go through the entire 16 cards before somebody got knocked out. Uh, you'll have games or rounds that actually will go through all the 16 cards. And once you draw off that last card, once there are no more cards, the last player picks up the last card any players left in the round, you're just simply going to compare the cards that you have in your hand um, after the last turn is taken. And the player with the highest ranking card, that's the player that wins that round. So um, the game can change a little bit. You can go through all 16 cards. You might knock players out really fast, really early, and only go through half of the cards. It doesn't seem like you could do that with, with only having 16 cards, but it is possible. Um, hopefully that gives you a good look of how Love Letter plays. I think Love Letter is a really fun, fast-paced card game. Um, I like the card deduction aspect of it, trying to remember what everybody has, and then trying to play what, what draws that you get to try to push people out um, or to stay alive. Um, you only have the one card, and you're always one card away from winning or one card away from losing. So that's going to wrap up the video for Love Letters Turn by Turn. Uh, let us know if you like the video by giving us a thumbs up. Let us know if you have any questions, comments. Um, in the comment box below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on gaming.